Good morning. God bless you all. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. We praise God for this another Sunday. We praise God that it is Sunday, October the 11th, and God has been good to us all week, wherein we are thankful and we are glad. We want to say good morning to our First Church family. We do love each and every one of you today and always. We want to thank and praise God even for our live family, church family and friends. Praise God for you, you and you. And I am here with your church announcements for today. First of all, I want to say thank you to each and every one of you. You are such a blessing to me. My church family surprised me last week for my birthday. And I want you to know you really did surprise me. No one spoiled the surprise. They got me real good. And I'm just grateful for all that you do. Um, the mothers have always said down through the years that no one has to do anything for you. So when they do, you make sure you say thank you. So I'm saying thank you on this morning. God bless you, each and every one. I love you, love you, love you with the love of the Lord. So praise God for you all. I'm thankful for another year of life. So I'm grateful on today. By way of announcements, it is also clergy month. We also know that we did not have a celebration at the church, but we did um, we did honor Pastor um, we do honor pastor this year for 14 years in pastoral ministry and he has been consistent and the lord has blessed us through it all so we praise god for all that god is continuing to do in him and in his life and in the ministry so we praise god for that and we want to ask you to remember the clergy all over those have poured into your life down through the years prayed for you, travailed with you. We honor each and every one who is still holding up the bloodstained banner because someone has got to do it. So we praise God for all of you in ministry and in leadership that are doing the work of the Lord in these last and evil days. Praise God for you. All right. Also, it is um, October month is not only uh, clergy appreciation. It's a busy month. It's also Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So we do honor and pray for all of those that have gone through it. The Lord has healed and brought through. That are still going through it. God is still healing. He is in the healing business. And we are grateful for the Lord healing the people everywhere. We lift you up today. We honor you today for all that God is doing in your life. We praise God for even the support system that the Lord has given you while you go through this journey, the doctors and all of the, the fundraisers and all the monies that have gone toward breast cancer awareness, all the walks. It has not been vain. People are yet being healed from this nasty disease. So we praise God for what he is doing in the lives of the people. It is also the month in the month of October. It is also Mental Awareness Month. So we are praying for those. We all have someone or know someone who is dealing with some type of mental illness on some level. And so we're praying because God can do anything. That's the kind of God we serve. So we're yet believing God for their healing, for their mind, oh God, and for their spirit, amen. God can regulate that thing, amen. He did it for the man in the, in the, uh, among the, the tombstones, in the cemetery. He did it for him, amen. And he can do it for each and every one of you. So we're praying for you as well. And we praise God. And in that vein, we're gonna to talk about Monday night prayer. It's tomorrow night intercessory prayer from 7 to 8 p.m. We will be praying for you, you, and you. And we're asking you to send in your prayer requests. You can type them in. You can um, call us, email us. Let us know. Send us names. Amen. We're going to continue in prayer. And I praise God for how the Lord has just been blessing our, our, our mothers and our our deacons and our elders that are leading us out in prayer and God is moving in that prayer and answering the prayers. So send us your prayer requests for Monday night prayer, 7 p.m. Tuesday night, the women will be together for our fresh wind session. Again, they bless me on Tuesday night um, for my birthday. It was such a beautiful, beautiful session. So thank God for all that were in charge and all that were just a part of that session. It was just lovely. I thank God for you on tonight at 10 and we invite you to come here. The women of God are just coming together and we are having a good time in the Lord. 
All right, on Wednesday night, it is Bible study and our capable pastor, Mark C. Jackson will be teaching on Wednesday night. Subject is how, how money affects the minister and the ministry. Oh, this is gonna be good. How money affects the minister and the ministry. Meet us on Wednesday night at 8 p.m. right on the Zoom, right here at 8 p.m. sharp. And also, Pastor gave us an assignment, a homework assignment last week. And he asked us to remind you all that for this Wednesday night, we're supposed to learn a scripture, preferably one you don't already know, but learn a scripture. All right, you're not only going to learn the scripture, you're going to be able to share where the scripture is found. You'll be surprised how much that will bless the people, amen? And not only that, he wants us to remember what is meant by the five-fold ministry. And he also says to remind you that you don't know who he's going to call on Wednesday night. Be prepared, do your homework assignment and be prepared. We're excited. We love the word of God. It is food to our souls and it's carrying us through this pandemic. Amen. The word of God, amen, is what's keeping us today. And we are excited. So come prepared on Wednesday night. Don't miss Bible study. We're going to have such a good time. Amen. In the word of God with our capable pastor, Mark C. Jackson. So come on out and share Wednesday night. God bless you in that. And lastly, we just want to remind you that uh, it is election year. It's almost time to vote. For those of you who have your mail-in ballots, remember, take your time, read the instructions, do everything exactly the way the instructions have provided to you, and then get that vote in. Make sure that you get it in. If you're going to vote early, that's wonderful. If you're going to go into the polls on November 3rd, if you can, get there early. I believe the polls open at 6 a.m. So what you can do, you can don your mask and your gloves, get there before the lines form, and you can go in and cast your vote and come on out, get your hand sanitizer, clean yourself up, and go on with your day. Amen. Go in the strength of the Lord and do what the Lord has allowed us to do and what our ancestors have fought so, so hard for us to be able to do, which is to get out and vote. Make your vote count. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. That's between you and God. Amen. But make sure you seek the Lord. Amen. About who to vote for and then get out there and vote. It is your civic duty and it is your right. Let's use our rights. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. At this time, I am done. I hope that I have not left anything out. But at this time, our district missionary, Mother Giselle Davis, in her capable way, is going to come and open us up with prayer. And immediately following the prayer, we will be in the hands of our pastor, Pastor Mark C. Jackson Sr. We praise God for him and continue to pray for us. Would you do that? We're lifting one another up. And we're praising God for you, you, and you. And he's continuing to bless us through this pandemic. And we are grateful. Come on, Mother Davis, and share with us. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this is the day that the Lord hath made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. We give your name glory on today for who you are and what you've already done. We thank you, oh God, for you saved our souls. You sanctified us. You filled us with your Holy Spirit. We come to you right now asking if we've done anything in word, thought, or deed that you would forgive us of our sins, that you would cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We want to be vessels of honor, fit and meet for the master's use. We thank you, oh God, for how you have moved in the earth. We thank you, oh God, for how you've already saved. We thank you, oh God, Abba, Abba, Father, our daddy, how you've already healed, delivered, and set free. We thank you, oh God, for how you've moved in the minds of your people. We thank you, oh God, for the mothers. We thank you, oh God, for your people here, there, and everywhere that have come to share the word of God. We thank you for our friends and our family, those that partnered with this ministry. We praise you, oh God, for we know that thou art a healer and a deliverer. We thank you for every ministry represented in the earth, preaching the truth of the word in the name of Jesus. 
We thank you for clergy appreciation month, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for breast cancer awareness month, God. We thank you, oh God, for mental illness awareness month god you know how to heal the minds of your people you know how to deliver oh god you know how to set free so we're believing and standing on your word that nothing is too hard for you touch the minds of your people heal them and set them free remind them to stand on your truth on the truth of your word remind them oh god that you're yet able to do anything and all things and nothing is too hard for you and we thank you for the pastor, our pastor Mark C. Jackson Sr., who shall rightly divide the word of truth, bless his life, bless his wife, his household in the name of Jesus, strengthen the man of God as he goes in the name of Jesus. We thank you for those that shall be saved on today, those that shall be delivered on today. And we know that you will remember the bereft everywhere, oh God, that are still hurt and hurting. We thank you for what you've already done. And we give your name glory now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We praise God for that prayer at this time. Pastor Mark Jackson is coming. Bless you. Good morning. Praise the Lord, everyone. Indeed, we're grateful to be in the land of the living another day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank God for, um, we, we honor all of our leadership on today. We honor <clears throat> Bishop Johnson and Mother uh, King, we honor Bishop uh, Superintendent Wartman, and uh, to our district missionary, Mother <clears throat> Giselle Davis, we thank God for her. And uh, we honor our Minister Williams and our Deacon Jackson and to all of our mothers and missionaries, we honor you and uh, thank God for you on today. We um, are just um, thankful for no bad news, amen, on this week, man, uh, things um, are, once again, getting a little out of control, a little out of hand concerning the uh, COVID-19, but um, we're yet uh, trusting and believing God as we do what we are supposed to do. So we thank God um, for just being God. We want to uh, continue to remind you to um, get your ballots in, those of you who have received your ballots, get your ballots in the mail, go and drop them off, whichever you prefer. And um, let's stay motivated about um, voting uh, in this election, not just for uh, the president, vice president, but we're gonna vote down ballot. We're going to vote down the ballot. We want to um, put as many Democrats in as we can. <laughs> Man, we want to put as many Democrats in as we can, not that they are um, our saviors, but uh, we tend to um, get better programs and funding and other things to swing in our favor and our direction when there's a, a Democratic uh, House, Democratic Senate. So uh, let's just stay motivated and encourage others to. Um, uh, to go out and vote, man. And if you really want to get involved, they're still looking for poll workers. They're looking for poll workers to volunteer um, on the day of the election to uh, help out. And as a matter of fact, there are polling places that they can close if they don't have enough um, volunteers to work polls. So if you can, encourage somebody else to go and to work <laughs> the, uh, the polls. We are uh, going to jump right into the word of God. If you give me 10 minutes, I'll be out of your way. Amen. We are going to the fourth chapter in the book of First Thessalonians. The fourth chapter of the book of First Thessalonians. 
And uh, we're going to begin by just reading uh, verse 13. Man, we'll open up and reading verse 13, 1 Thessalonians 4 and 13. And it reads like this, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. And we're going to just use for a thought today, don't be ignorant. Don't be ignorant. Now, there's some of you who you just say, oh, I don't like that subject. I don't know who, who he calling ignorant. What is he talking about? No, well, let me just explain it to you. The ignorant. Ignorant just simply means to lack in information, to lack in knowledge, or to lack in awareness. And that's not about everything. That could be in, uh, in something in particular. Um, a surgeon, a surgeon can be ignorant in auto mechanics. A surgery could go. A, a surgeon can go into your body and perform all types of surgeries, but may not know the starter from the alternator. <laughs> may not know the, 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 you know, antifreeze from windshield wiper fluid. Y you understand. So they are ignorant in that area of pro mechanics. And so we're not, uh, we, we're not here trying to insult you. We just want you by definition of the word. We don't want you to be ignorant concerning what we are about to speak about on today. All right. And how many of you all know that Nobody knows it all. And so we are all ignorant or lacking in information in, in some area, right? And so therefore, um, I'm going to just be like Paul. Paul said, I don't want you to be ignorant, all right, or, or lacking in information or awareness, okay? And we're going to bring this out. So if you could give me 10 minutes, I'll be out your way, but we're just trying to... Uh, uh, um, uh, inform you on today and in and while informing you uh, maybe it will uh, lift your spirits all right or, or, or get you to um, uh, maybe encourage you to just stay on track and hold on all right in first Thessalonians 4 the apostle Paul who wrote this to the church at Thessalonica he was addressing issues that the church had, which Paul did on several occasions when he wrote a letter or an epistle. What he did was um, uh, he would address things that he had heard, that people would write him a letter and then he would uh, respond via letter or he would just, the Lord would just lead him to write a letter like he wrote to Timothy, like he wrote to Titus, like he wrote to Philemon, all right, uh, uh, just uh, giving them what the Lord gave him. But when you read the uh, epistles or letters written to the churches, uh, it, it was usually in response to something that he had heard, something that they needed to be informed about. And so in this fourth chapter in the book of Thessalonica, what he did was, is he began to uh, encourage them and let them know that there was a difference between holy and unholy, and therefore they should not be uh, fornicating. They should not be doing the things that the unbelievers uh, were doing. He encouraged them to have a uh, brotherly love one towards um, another, and, uh, and that we should practice um, sanctification. He addressed that uh, in chapter 4, verses 1 through 12. We're always receiving instructions from the Lord. Amen. As long as you are a believer, amen, we will always be receiving instruction and information from the Lord. Then he got down and to verse 13, and he began to address another issue that uh, the church was dealing with. And he said, and I'm going to take this one at a time. Verse 13 says, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope, all right? What Paul was saying was, <laughs> is I don't want you to be ignorant. I don't want you to be lacking in information. 
I don't want you to be lacking in knowledge and I, I, I don't want you to be lacking in awareness concerning those believers who had died. All right. He said, because he said, because I don't want you because of the lack of your information or lack of awareness. I don't want you to sorrow over those believers who died in the faith like others do over, over those who died outside of the faith. All right. He, he, he was like, you need to have this information. You, you, you need to be aware, amen, that there is a difference between those who died in the faith and those who died outside of the faith. All right. And, and, and so I, I, I want you to be aware of this so that you don't sorrow, that you don't grieve over those loved ones the same way as, as you do over those who have not died in the faith. Verse 14 says, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also with sleep in Jesus Christ will God bring with him. What does that mean? First of all, it starts out by saying, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, which he did. That's, that's not a question, all right? We believe it. You have to understand that the foundation of Christianity, the whole premise of Christianity is that not just that a Savior was born, but the Savior lived, our Savior died, and our Savior rose again. Amen. Jesus Christ is not dead, but by the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, God. By the power, I said, I'm going to just teach this thing. <laughs> Woo! But when you talk about woo, the rapture of my, the, the, the resurrection of my Savior, amen, not 72 hours after he died, but on the third day, amen, by the power of the Holy Ghost, you got to understand that Amen. Jesus went in to the grave with no power. Amen. His body laid in the tomb. His spirit went back to God, but his soul went down. Amen. Into Hades, into Gehenna in the paradise compartment, but he went with no power. Amen. But on the third day, by the power of the Holy Ghost, it was the Holy Ghost amen, that raised Jesus from the dead, amen, the Bible says, woo, in verse 14, amen, that likewise, amen, the same power, amen, of the Holy Ghost, amen, those who died in the faith, amen, God would resurrect them from the dead, and he would be able to bring those who died in Christ with him, amen, verse 15, verse 15, we moving right along, amen. Verse 15 says, for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. In other words, this is not just what we feel, amen, but amen, the same way Paul said over in 1 Corinthians concerning the Last Supper, he said, for amen, the Lord has given this unto me. That's what he's saying. He says, what I'm telling you is what the Lord gave me. Verse 15, for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Amen. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, we which are alive. In other words, there's going to be some people that will be alive when the rapture of the church takes place. Amen. There will be people going about their normal routines. Amen. There will be two. Amen. People will be working. People will be going to church. People will be uh, 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 going about the course of their life. Amen. When the rapture takes place. It says, uh, we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent, or that word means precede them, which are alive, amen. I mean, which are 
asleep, or which means dead. So those that will be alive when the rapture takes place won't go into the presence of the Lord for those who died in faith. Amen. In, in, in other words, uh, um, those that died in the faith, amen, might get to the heavenly rest resort before we do, but they can't check in before we all gonna check in together because there is a check-in time. So you 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 might die in the faith and get there before me, but you can't check in until amen we all get there together. So we which of those that's still alive won't precede them. Amen. Amen. You won't get VIP seating. Amen. You won't precede them. You won't be able to go in. Amen. And get closest to the Lord. You, we won't precede those that are asleep in Christ. Or, or, or that word just means dead. Let's just call it what it is. Those, those that had died in the faith. All right. Verse 16 says, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. Let me just stop right there. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. If I get an appointment from Bishop T.D. Jakes to come preach at his church, when I fly into Dallas, Texas, T.D. Jakes will not be at the airport waiting for me. T.D. Jakes will send a car. He will send a driver, and I'll see T.D. Jakes when I get to wherever I'm going. But how many of y'all know that the Lord wanted to let y'all know that you are so important? that I'm not sending anybody to pick you up, but instead the Lord himself, amen, shall, oh my God, the Lord shall descend, amen. Let, let, let me let me slow down. I don't want to get ahead of myself, amen. But when you talk about, amen, the rapture of the church and you will not find the word rapture in the Bible, in the Bible because the word rapture just comes from the old English, which means to be taken swiftly as like in an abduction, amen. And so you won't find that word rapture in there, but we use that word because we know it's going, everything's going to take place quickly, amen. Because over in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, it lets us know that we shall all be changed where in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. And so this is going to happen Amen. And very quickly. Amen. But it says the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. That means a shout of a command, which means he's going to bark out commands. We're going to get back to that in a second. He's going to uh, uh, descend from heaven with a shout. Amen. Let me slow down. It says he's going to descend. Amen. People that's in the grave don't descend. They would have to ascend. Amen. But the Bible says Christ is going to descend. And it told us from where? From heaven. Why? Because when he, amen, was caught up, amen. How many of y'all know the Bible says that he's now sitting on the right hand, amen, of majesty or the father. He's sitting on the right hand of him that's sitting on the throne. And so when, when the rapture takes place, the Bible says he will descend from heaven with a shout. He's going to bark out some commands. It says, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. Well, let's look at that. Let me remind you of the set of the time period in which this was written. In this time period, it was written when, amen, uh, uh, the kings, amen, uh, 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 Caesar, amen, the, 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 the governors, amen, when they would travel, amen, they would travel on their chariots and they would have uh, an entourage, those that went before them. And when they came to these intersections, amen, what they would do is they would blow the trumpet and they would let all know in that area that the emperor, the ruler, the king was coming through. And anybody that was on those roads near those intersections they had to back up and allow the king to come through. And so when you see, hey amen, you're talking about the trump of God, you have to understand when the trump blows, hey amen, what's going to happen is all of the activity 
activity that's going on in the heavens is going to have to cease. Amen. Satan's angels and God's angels, amen, they will have to stand back, amen, because the Savior stood up off the throne, amen, and now he's traveling to go and pick up his saints, amen, and so they will have to back up and part ways, amen, with the truck, but 1 Corinthians 15 lets us know that there's going to be more than one trump, amen, because it says at the last trump, amen, oh my God, let me, let me, let, let me, let me just go back, let me just go back, amen, because, amen, it says, amen, he's going to descend from heaven with a shout, amen, and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, the archangel will announce, amen, Jesus the Savior, amen, the Son of God, amen, Yahweh is on his way through, amen, you need to back up and say, what did say, uh, what, what, what Trump say, stand down, but stand by, amen, because the King of Kings and Lord of Lords is on his way through, amen, it says, and what, the dead and Christ is going to rise. Now let me back up, amen, because it talked about that shout, which is a shout, amen, of a command. And so what I believe is that the same way that when Jesus was in Bethany and stood before the tomb of Lazarus, and he called out, he said, Lazarus, come forth. He barked out a command. I believe that when he shouts out that command, he's going to shout out every name of every believer that's in the grave. And he's going to call them up and say, come forth. Amen. Yes, Lord Jesus, on that day, he's going to say, Bishop Mason, come forth. Bishop O.T. Jones, come forth. Bishop J.O. Patterson, come forth. Bishop G.E. Patterson, come forth. Bishop Ford, come forth. Hallelujah. Bishop Owens, come forth. He's going to call the names of your loved ones that died in the faith. And if we're in the ground, he's going to call our name and tell us to come forth, hallelujah, because he has the power over the grave. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Amen. Verse, amen. What did it say? What did it say? What did it say? 16. Amen. I'm the dead in Christ. It's going to do what? It's going, they're going to rise first. Amen. They're going to rise first. Hallelujah, he's not going to give us or those that are alive any type of advantage. Amen, but we're going to have to stay pat until those that are in the grave, until they get to where we are. And then it says, then we which are alive and remain shall be what? Caught up together with them, <laughs> woo, hallelujah, in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And it says, so shall we be with him forever. Amen. Listen, we're going to do this together. <laughs> Hallelujah, the same way we have corporate prayer, the same way we have corporate worship, the same way we have corporate praise, there's going to be a corporate rapture, and we all going to get caught up together to meet him in the air. Hallelujah. But listen, listen, here's what it says in verse 18. Verse 18 says, wherefore, comfort one another with these words, amen. In other words, don't you just, amen, uh, allow that to permeate you and you just think about it. But what you have to do is you gotta encourage folks, lost loved ones who, are, who died in Christ. You have to use this word to encourage yourself if you're on your bed of affliction, if it appears you're on your deathbed, oh my God, you have to encourage yourself with these words, knowing that if this is my last breath, if this is my last sunrise, if this, if this is my last sunset, hallelujah, I'm going to the grave, but I ain't going to stay there. Well, but when the trump sound, hallelujah, I'm getting up for that great getting up morning. So we got to encourage ourselves and encourage others with these words. We're in 
a world where there's a whole lot going on and we get overwhelmed by everything that we do. We call it a rat race, <laughs> striving, trying to get education, trying to pay for education, striving, trying to keep a roof over our head, striving, trying to pay bills, striving, trying to own things and do things. And, and, and this is a struggle. That's the struggle for many. And what happens is we get overwhelmed and we let life overtake us and weigh us down. But we have to remember that we are only pilgrims that's past through this land. This is not our final destination. Well, but when we're done with all of this, when our number is called, we're getting out of here. You're going to leave them furs right where they are. You're going to leave those cars right where they are. Those nice houses are going to be right where they are. Well, but when we get up, we're going to leave it behind. The Bible says, well, we're going to be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. We're going to be changed from mortal to immortality. We're going to take off that which is corruptible and put on incorruption. Hallelujah. Yes, we are. We're going to forever be with the Lord. You don't have to worry about if you pay is going to make it to the next paycheck. You won't have to worry about how you're going to pay for college. You won't have to worry about a bad doctor's report. You won't have to worry about any of that because when we're in the presence of the Lord, all that you need, hallelujah, is going to be there in heaven, even though we cannot get sick. Let me show you how thorough my God is in our new bodies, which won't be able to be infected with disease, bacteria. It won't be able to decay like these bodies. We can't get Alzheimer's, cancer, pneumonia. We can't get arthritis in those new bodies. But just in case you could, the Bible says that there's a tree uh, planted by the river uh, that's good for the healing of the nation. Uh, hallelujah. God is thorough uh, in everything that he does. Uh, thank you, God. I just want to encourage you on today uh, that one of these mornings, uh, it won't be long. Uh, we don't know the date, but we know we're in the season. Uh, Jesus is going to crack that sky. Uh, and if you're right with the Lord, how many of y'all know if you die right, you'll get up right. If you die filled, the Holy Ghost will raise you up. Thank you, God. If the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, oh my God, if it dwell in you, it shall quicken these mortal bodies. Hallelujah. By the power of the Holy Ghost. He's going to raise you up. Oh, God, yes, Lord. Lord, we say thank you. Thank you, so don't be ignorant. Amen. Keep it in store. Keep it in your mind. Know that this is not it. Hallelujah, but there is coming a day when you're going to see your grandmama again. You're going to see mom and daddy again. You're going to see past and ship again. Hallelujah, and we shall spend eternity. Amen. Praise again, worshiping the God that washed us and saved us. Thank you, God. The wages of sin is death. Oh, my God, but the gift of God is eternity life. Uh, yes, Lord, through Christ Jesus. Uh, if you want to make it in, amen, you have to uh, have Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. If you want to take part in the rapture of the church, uh, you have to know the Lord Jesus uh, and in the pardon of your sins. Uh, amen. You got you to gotta believe uh, 
amen, that Jesus is God, amen, that he died and God raised him up on the third day, amen, you got to believe this, you got to confess your sins, amen, before God, and the Bible says in Romans 10, 8, 9, and 10, if you do these things, then you are saved, and if you're saved, you're going to reign with him, amen, if you're saved, you're his child, amen, if you're saved, you don't have to worry about the wages of sin. You can concentrate on the gift of God, which is et uh, eternal life. Amen. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. If you don't know him, amen, you can know him on today. Amen. And for those of you that know him, hold on. Amen. Hold on, hold on. Amen. Because it won't be long now. Amen. It won't be long. Let me tell you something. Don't be like those five foolish virgins, amen, who, who allowed their, their lamps, they allowed the oil to run out, amen, and then when they had to go get some more oil, amen, the bridegroom came, amen, and the doors were shut, and it was too late for them, amen, you need to keep oil in your lamp, amen, don't let the oil run low, don't let the oil run out, this is not the time, amen, to fall behind, but it's the time to stay focused on God, amen, I'm encouraging, amen, those of you all, amen, who are sick, amen, and things don't look like they're going to change, amen, how many of y'all know you in a win-win situation, you can't lose when you're with Christ Jesus, if he calls you home, you die in Christ, and if he heals you and allows you to stay here, amen, you got a testimony that God is still a healer, thank you, you can't wear in a win-win situation, amen, so amen, take this word, and encourage somebody on today. Amen. Share it with somebody. Lift somebody's spirits. Amen. And encourage your own self. Amen. Encourage your own self. Amen. Don't let the world weigh you down so much. Amen. You allow it to depress you and take you. Amen. Or, and, and change your focus. Amen. But our focus. Amen. Should we should be like Paul. Our press. Amen. Toward the mark. Amen. For what? The prize. Amen. Keep your eyes on the prize. Amen. God bless you all. Pray for me. Amen. And encourage one another with this word. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, God. It won't be long now. Woo God, thank you. When you start seeing different things going on in the world, the Bible says, when you see these things, look up. Amen. Uh, it, it won't be long now. Just look up. Uh, amen. In preparation for going up. Uh, hallelujah. God bless you. Amen. I said 10 minutes. I'm going to get out of here, but God is good. Uh, amen. I don't feel like leaving. Amen. God is good. Hallelujah. Oh, bless him. Hey, bless him. Yes, bless Lord. him. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. hallelujah. We're going to keep our lamps oil. We're going to keep oil in our lamps. Amen. And we're going to continue to do what the Lord, hallelujah, has called us to do. We're going to yes, be encouraged God. in the word. Hallelujah. Knowing that Jesus is soon to come. Hallelujah. And he's going to rapture his people. Amen. Will you be ready? Hallelujah. The saints of old used to say, I'm packed up, ready to be picked up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. That means your soul is right with the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. We praise God for that word on today. I often say, if you would stick with us, amen, the word is going to bless your life. Hallelujah. Apply that word to your life and you can make it into glory. Amen. We are not, we pastor said it already. Amen. This is not our home. We're just pilgrims traveling through. Amen. And as we're going through this journey, we're sharing the love of God. We're sharing the plan of God, the plan of salvation for his people. Amen. So while we go through these things down here, we're going to stay focused. Amen keeping oil in our lamps, knowing that God is soon to come, amen, and he's going to bring us our reward, hallelujah, His, he said, and I come that my reward is with me, amen, so we praise God for the word, amen, coming from our pastor, Pastor Mark C. Jackson, he did bless us on today, we're praying that the Lord will continue to strengthen him, amen, and continue to anoint him and encourage his life, amen, 
as God is doing what only God can do for his people, we are grateful. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Let's bless the Lord one more time. Hallelujah. For our pastor, for the word of God. Amen. Empowering us. Amen. Hallelujah. To hold on to God. Hallelujah. Amen. He won't fail you. Hallelujah. I'm a witness. He never fails. Amen. God bless you. We're going to say goodbye our Facebook Live family. Thank you for joining us. Amen. We're going to remind you, if you can and will, to like, comment, and share this word. Amen. We've got to spread the word. Come on and spread the word of God and continue to pray for us as we pray for you. We do love you on today. We want to thank you for those who have been giving and sowing into this ministry. Thank you for doing that. You have been a blessing to the ministry. We're going to ask that you will continue to do that, whatever the Lord has placed on your hearts. Amen. It is a uh, seed sowing time. So if you can, we're going to ask that you would share in the cash app as dollar sign first Kojic Hillside. And remember that there is a first Kojic. Amen. But we are first Kojic Hillside. Amen. In our cash app in Zell, it is first Kojic one at Comcast.net. Amen. And if you would like to mail in your checks, there are some that prefer to send in by mail. That is perfectly fine. The address is First Church of God in Christ, P.O. Box 314, Hillside, New Jersey, zip code 07205. God bless you. I want to say goodbye to our Facebook family. We do love you. Continue to pray for us. We're praying for you. God bless you and be blessed. To our First Church family. Oh, I didn't, I didn't do that. Thank you. To our First Church family, God bless you. Brother Mike, you can unmute everyone. We want to say hello and share some love. I got a testimony.